for the rest of today, and I think the rest of the class, we're always going to be focusing on on-demand schedules, where we don't know all the tasks in advance. We have tasks coming in. We may have tasks with deadlines. We may have tasks that don't have set deadlines. It's something that the scheduler has to determine on the fly. So the most obvious scheduling strategy is what's known as first come, first serve. So the strategy there, tasks come in. Here's the, the supervisor, here's the kernel. When a task is created, it gets added to some queue. Each time a task gets created, it gets added to the bottom of that queue. When the scheduler has a chance to schedule a task, it's always going to pick the first one. And that first one's going to get to run until it finishes. When that task finishes, then the scheduler is going to pick the next one in the queue. We're going to be executing the tasks in the order that they were requested. How well do we like first come, first serve scheduling? There are two properties we care about. We care about maximizing resource usage and fairness. How well does it do on those? Yeah. Not that good on both or on either. So some tasks you're going to wait for a long time. Sounds like it's not doing too well on fairness. Fairness is a pretty tricky thing to define. But it seems pretty unfair if some task has to wait forever for a previous task to finish. How well does it do on resource maximization? Yeah. So it's, it's doing really well on resource maximization because it's not wasting any time switching. Do we need a kernel timer interrupt if we use first come, first serve? The kernel can start a task. It doesn't need to set a timer. It lets that task run until it's done. That's really using our resources well. We're not wasting any time switching. We're only switching when a task is done and we're ready to run a new one. So the way this would work more in practice, tasks don't usually finish before their time is up. They usually get stuck. They're waiting for some I.O. event. They've done a read from memory or a read from the disk or some network event. They go back to the, the scheduler. They don't waste the processor waiting for that. If you really waited till the task really finished, that would be bad for resource utilization because you're sitting around waiting for these I.O. events. But as long as you're not doing that, you're not doing any unnecessary switches, and you're, you're making good use of the processor. This is really the same thing as non-preemptive multitasking. Right? It's saying once you've started a task, it gets to run until it gives up the CPU. One alternative is to say, we're going to give everyone a share. The kernel is going to have a list of tasks. It's going to set a timer. Every time the timer goes, it's going to switch to the next task in that list and go around the list, giving each one a fair slice. If a task stops on I.O., well, then it goes right away to the next one. So we're going around. In this case, we had three. The scheduler is round robin scheduling, giving each one a turn, and then giving the next one a turn. How do we like this? Yes. OK, good. Yeah. So this definitely seems more fair. We're giving each process an equal share of the CPU. We're spending a lot more time in switching. When P1 is running, it gets to run for some time slice. And when that time slice is done, even if P1 is still doing useful work and has lots more useful work to do, it's getting switched out. Experiencing all the costs of doing a contact switch, even though P1 could have kept running in a useful way. And that switch is very expensive. These are our two most basic options for scheduling. We've seen that first come, first serve is great for resource uses, and round robin is great for fairness. But they're both pretty poor for the other property. So which one do we think my laptop is using? How would we figure that out? What should I try running to try to figure out what my laptop is doing? Are there tests I could do to figure out if it's doing first come, first serve, or round robin, or something else? So if I, if I use sleep, so sleep would make that process go, go away, give up the processor, does that behave differently whether I'm doing round robin or first come, first serve? So what I want is something that tries to use the CPU forever. Right? So sleep is a way to give up the sleepy CPU for some amount of time. What do I want? Okay. Um, so is ping using the CPU a lot? Yeah, it's mostly waiting for I.O. Right? So if we're only running things that mostly wait for I.O., whether we're using first come, first serve or round robin, we can't tell the difference. Our program is giving up the processor when it waits for I.O. or when it calls sleep, when it's doing something that doesn't use the CPU. So we, what we want is a program that's really using the CPU. Yeah. Yeah, right. So if we create a program that is using the CPU, never doing any I.O., how is that going to look if we have first come, first serve scheduling? Once that gets to run, it's going to take over all the, the resources of that core. Right? And if it's multi-core, or if it's multi-thread, it's, it's going to take over all the resources of all the cores it gets to run on. Right? If it's round robin, it's not going to take over all the resources. So we've written lots of programs 
that basically just used CPU, um, like the one we wrote last class. The program we had last class was doing this loop that was increasing a counter. Not doing any I.O., not going to sleep, just using the CPU. I've only changed it to increase these numbers. It was 10 and 100. I've made it 1,000 and 10,000. So now it's doing 10 million increases of the counter. And it's launching tasks in this loop for 1,000. So it's asking for all the cores it can get as well. Let's see what happens when you run this. So it's running. We're not seeing any output. If I added some prints in here, I could see what's going on, but then there might be more chance that it would waiting for I.O. Even printing to the console requires some I.O., so that might be expensive. What fraction of my processor do you think it's going to get? Any guesses? So if I had round-robin scheduling, and I've got a bunch of other processes running, which I do, what fraction of my CPU do you think this program should get? Yes. Not a lot, right? So the most any one program should get under round robin is 1 divided by n, where n is the number of processes waiting to do work. With first come, first serve, the most one could get is the entire processor. It is still running. So we can do top and see what we're getting. So second thing on the list, RWRC is getting 367% of my CPU. So does that answer the question, what kind of scheduler my Mac has? Is that enough to know? So actually, let's do this. So let's do that in the background. So we've got the original one running, and I'm going to start a new one. If it's first come, first serve, the new one shouldn't get any. If it is round robin, it should get about an equal share. So now I've got two of them running. Let's see what I see on top. They are both getting about 300%. So that means I've got, actually, uh, I think one finished, actually. That was bad. Let me restart that one. So. So it looks like one finished. Yeah, one did finish. And it did get, get up to 10 million. Let's start a few now. OK, so now we got enough to know that my CPU should be very busy. What does it look like my scheduler is doing? So I've got four of them running. They're all getting about 200%. So how many cores do I have? I'm hearing some fours and some eights. How do we set how many cores I have? Yeah. Ah, OK. Trick question. Good answer. Yeah. So counting cores is also a little bit funny, right? So, so the way different processor vendors make cores is one core can sometimes run two threads. And so that's actually what's going on here. So we have four cores running, but each one can run two threads. So that makes it look like I have 800% CPU total. Still getting about 180%. Now, top is sampling. So that total sometimes may go over 800%, but it shouldn't be much over 800% for uh, for too long. What's with all those MD worker tests that are getting above my RW arc on this list? So they're not getting more CPU share. They are getting, let's see, where did my, oh, I think my uh, RW arc is all finished. I should have made more than 10 million. Even 10 million finishes too quickly with four of them running for me to finish what I'm explaining. But it looks a lot more like round robin, that they're getting a fair share. The fact that we started four. It's definitely not first come, first serve. I've started about eight. And we've started eight. They're all, now we got about, yeah, all of them getting 300%. So either I've magically got some extra cores, or top is, so top is sampling what's running at different intervals and not getting a very accurate number here. But now it looks like they're all about 100%. And I've got eight of them. So that, that makes sense. It's definitely trying to share things more fairly. It's not using complete round robin, and we'll talk more about what it's using soon.